Hey everybody, um, we had an inadvertent stitchless wallet month, but we're now coming to an end. So we have, last week we made the Gilby horizontal wallet, which is held together with two rivets and has two pockets, one on the inside, one on the outside. This week we're going to make the vertical version. Uh, we'll make it a little bit differently with how we apply our hardware, but it's still, we're just going to need two rivets and one closure of your choice, I'm using an 18 millimeter magnetic snap from Buckle Guy. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take the long tongue of that section and put it through the slot punch, which this is a one inch slot punch. And this is actually gonna be an attachment point for our whole wallet. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna install it by using the rivet back. It stays on, but it won't, it's not permanent. So we have to put that in the press. Now this is the wrong, so it's a three-part desk, but it's a three-part press, which is unusual, because you know the top kind of stays the same because it's just a nice rivet back. What I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna press down some of the way make sure everything is going straight, and then push down all the way. And you'll see, I actually use a die that was smaller than the one it came with to kind of create this cool ridge line. Now I tested that on the inside of the wallet to see if this is the size that I want to use, because I want to do it on the outside of the wallet, because on the outside, we'll be able to see it. And that's cool, but I think we could probably go to the smaller size and get a little more dramatic effect. All right, next thing we want to do, now this is Wicket and Craig's Vachetta. It's beautiful, beautiful leather, um, so it shouldn't be too dry. If you're worried that your hide is a little bit dry, you might want to case this with water, dampen it so you don't crack it. But we're just going to put this fold in here on both sides. And really, you could just case the whole thing and put the fold in anyway. Um, but I find that just doing it like this or using your roller a little bit. Now this will crack even properly moisturized leather, so don't go too crazy with that. But just putting a little roll in, starting to get the permanent shape of how we want this leather to be. I think we're about ready to set our rivets and create our second pocket. We're gonna jazz this one up a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is, I have some scrap pochetta here, and I have a KS blade washer puncher, Ooh, washer puncher. So it's a circle in a circle. And all I'm gonna do is tap out two of these. And the way that this works is this comes apart, and then there, well, there's one of my washers. Center washers every time. And I'm going to combine that with a bit of a smaller rivet to give a little bit more of a detailed look on the back. Okay, so what we want to do is we have our washers right here. And we want, I'm going to use single cap rivets because I like the back side can be nice and smooth for our cards. So the order we're gonna go in is the back flap, then we're gonna fold over this side, then we're gonna add our washer, and then we're gonna add our snap like that. We're not gonna, just like the last one, we're not gonna fully set this. We're just gonna partially set it. There we go. And then we're gonna stack them up and layer them on this side the same way. Okay, so if you ever have tubular rivets that are too long like this, you could just take a pair of nippers and that'll work just the same as a normal rivet would. You might have to bend it back out circular to get the cap on it, but that's all you need. So, a little secret pro tip. Just 
take this, nip that off. And the problem is my rivets were sitting crooked on these pieces because the rivet pose is too long. So you want to make sure if you clip a rivet like this, let me make it guys in focus. Uh, you take a little pair of pliers and just make it round again and squeeze it in a little bit. Kind of like that. And then you can take your cap and make sure they fit together. Right? And then you put it in the prep or you hammer it. This metal smushes in here and just as strong as a normal rivet or tubular rivet. Um, which means that if you want the best bang for your buck, um, as far as flexibility is concerned, buying the longest post available on any given rivet is not the worst idea. So this is how we're going to put this together, part two. We're going to put our rivet through the pocket right there first. Then we're going to put it through this hole here, like that. Then we're going to add our washer. Then we're going to add our rivet top. And when you clip them and you round them, you got to kind of wiggle them in a little bit different, obviously. There we go. Perfect. Then we're going to go onto our shoehorn like this. And remember, we want to push out like this because these are trying to stick out. So I'm going to kind of do this the same way I did it last time. got a microphone, a little tiny mic. You can, you can probably hear it. And I think it just got in the way. Um, okay, so we have, we're almost there. So we need to pull this a little bit. Now, what I've done is I've gone ahead and I've set these rivets tight enough to where if I move this leather, it's a little difficult and it'll stay where I want it. And it's just like, it's the same as the horizontal version we did last week. You just want to kind of massage it in there. And when you get the right angle, just kind of throw it in, hold it any way you can to make sure it stays in shape, and go. I actually have to move you guys back a little bit. Oh god, there was, <laughs> there was a hurricane. Let's see, there we go, that's better. I'm gonna check before I do my second one. Yeah, everything's pretty much seated. Once, ever, once everything gets seated, this last one, doing the second half, is simple. Okay, found it. So this is how you change dies on all of Bakugai's guys' dies. You just screw them in. So the innie goes in that, it locks in. Boom. We know that's centered and it's nice and flat. So when I close it, I have to say this is unlike them, this is the Gilby Wild I'm most proud of. I love the little detail of the washers, because you're like, you turn around, you're like, oh, didn't expect that. And then it just pops open. These nut these 18 millimeters are just absolutely perfect. They'll snap close on their own, but they won't come undone if I can. Okay, not with one hand when you're... There we go, got it. Um, so I'm gonna try with the smallest die I have to make a little impression in this because it's a little too plain Jane for me, I think. I think we gotta try to add a little zhuzh. 
Okay, I have absolutely no size, no idea what size this is, but this is the size of the snap. I also think I'm way too close to this camera to get focused right now, but we're gonna try to add a ridge with this to this. First thing we're gonna do is screw in the smaller die on the top. And then, since this is gonna center our snap, which is already installed, we're gonna put that right there. Now we're basically gonna be pressing down into this brass. There's a lacquer coating over it, so you do risk cracking the lacquer. It's not very visible when it happens, but it might happen, which means that your piece might patina a little faster. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm just holding it right now, making sure that I'm as centered as I possibly can be. And now we're just gonna let her rip, I guess. Yep, uh, that's as centered as I can get. Here we go. And that's gonna be it, guys. Here's our final wallet. Opens up. Ooh. There we go. Nice brass. You can leave that on for your customer to take it off, or you can do it yourself. Nice, imperfect, but beautiful, if I do say so myself. Little snap mod there. And then our smaller rivets on the back with our tuxedo look. Holds a few cards or cash, either at either side. Um, yeah, and this is Wicket and Craig Natural Vachetta, which has been, I've honestly never worked with it, really, until I started working with Buckle Guy, because I always use Herman Oak. Um, it's a little more supple. I don't know how it ages yet. I'm sure there are plenty of options on the internet, pictures and stuff, but working with it, it's a little bit, a um, little more supple and a little more, um, has a little more moisture than Herman Oak. So that is my comparison. All right, I'm getting out of here. It's getting dark and y'all got a wallet to make. So pattern pack with the horizontal and the vertical version are at the second link. Everything you need to make on make this wallet is in the first link. I love you guys so much. Thank you so much for the support of me transitioning from being a two person to being a one person team. And I go to the editing board and I don't have time to film another segment, but it's out of focus, but you guys don't care. Um, you have no idea how much I appreciate that. I'm gonna get this down. I just got, hopefully this sounds better because I got an, a microphone and a stand and we had all that stuff before, but it was for two people. And um, so I'm building it all up again slowly with all of the sales, and the patterns and stuff that you buy. I'm putting it right back in so that I can film alone. And I can't thank you. I don't think, I, I just can't thank you properly for allowing me to do what I, this for a living. So thank you guys again so much. I'll see you in the next one.